Hello and welcome to Frank Specs. In this very video, we tend to look at the drug addiction capital of the world, the problem of drug use in Afghanistan. Have you ever been to Afghanistan? If you've not, relax, sit tight, let's take you on this very journey on one of the big problems battling Afghanistan, aside the issue of unemployment, poverty and war ravaging the country. This is Frank Speaks. Remember to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell and also share this very video with your friends. If you're set, I am ready. Let's jump straight into it. Afghanistan, one of the world's largest producers of heroin and methamphetamine, most of it smuggled abroad. Afghanistan is home to nearly 4 million drug users, or close to 10% of the total population according to the UN. The worsening crisis has left most of the country's drug treatment and rehabilitation centers struggling to cope. A walk through what is considered in Kabul to be the golden standard drug treatment center is heartbreaking. The condition in the 1000 best facility are there. Since the Taliban came to power in 2021, international funding has dried up leaving underpaid, poorly trained staff to deal with the patients. Food is scarce, and what little is available provides a scanty nutrition. Pharmacy cabinets are practically empty, so recovering patients are shocked into detoxification. In recent months, they have been rounding up hundreds of men across the capital, from the bridge, from parks, and from hilltops. Most have been taken to a former U.S. military base, which has been turned into a makeshift rehabilitation center. Afghanistan is the drug addiction capital of the world. An estimated 3.5 million people in a country with a population of about 40 million are addicted. According to the Bureau of International Narcotics, under the Pol Sukkot Bridge, hundreds of men can often be seen squatting, hunched among piles of rubbish, strange feces and occasionally the cops of those who had overdosed. The drugs of choice are heroin or methamphetamine. Drug addiction is one of the alarming public health and social problems in Afghanistan and around the world. Addiction denotes uh, the habitual use of physical or mental dependence on narcotic drugs or psychotropic substance. The methods here Drug addicts who were admitted to six public addict rehabilitation centers in Herat, Afghanistan between March and July of 2019 were recruited for this description study. A total of 299 drug addicts were included in this very study you're seeing in this video. A 77 item containing three subscales, 39 items for personal information, 32 items for drug use, and six items for dependence and treatment subscale were validated and used for data collection. The findings. The maiden age of participants was 30 years of all participants 79.1% were male, 56.6% were illiterate, 1.7% were university graduates. In this study, 44.8% of the participants used heroin, 20.7% used opium, and 15.4% used methamphetamine. Almost half of the participants, 49.5%, declared that at least one member of their families was a drug user. Of the 299 drug users included in this study, 64.9% stated that at least one person close to them, except family members, used drugs. Over to third of the participants, 78.4% had easy access to drugs. 26.8% had broken laws for money, drug at least once in their lifetime. 25th of October 2023, Kabul, Afghanistan, the European Union have allocated additional 10 million pounds, equivalent to 800 million Afghani, to improve mental health and address drug use disorder in Afghanistan. These additional EU fundings will ensure that the World Health Organization, WHO, and the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime can widen access to mental health support and drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation services for vulnerable populations in Afghanistan, including women and girls. The EU feels very strongly about improving the health and well-being of the people in Afghanistan. It is important that those people who struggle with mental health and drug abuse disorders have access to comprehensive health services and that they are helped to reintegrate into the society. This is why the EU has decided to increase the funding to some persons in Afghanistan who are suffering from drug addiction. With this additional funding, more people in need will be reached. 
the EU support is essential in facilitating access to mental health support and drug abuse treatment and rehabilitation services for vulnerable populations in Afghanistan, WHO representative in Afghanistan said. This additional £10 million in funding will significantly enhance our endeavor to tackle the existing mental health and drug use disorder challenges among these populations, thereby enabling them to deliver the requisite care and support they rightfully deserve. Afghanistan has nearly 4 million drug users, roughly 10% of the population. The worsening drug crisis has left most of the country's drug treatment and rehabilitation centers struggling to cope and drug users without access to treatment. The additional funding is crucial in addressing drug use and its related disorder in Afghanistan. By increasing access to integrated, evidence-based and human rights reoriented drug treatment and rehabilitation services, the EU's ongoing commitment reflects its dedication for promoting health and well-being in Afghanistan by working with WHO and the UNODC. The EU aims to create sustainable solutions that addresses complex issues surrounding mental health and drug use disorder in the country. The initial funding provided by the EU in 2022 played a pivotal role in strengthening mental health and drug use disorder service in Afghanistan. True cooperation with WHO and the initiatives helped to enhance the quality and availability of those crucial services. For example, the EU-funded projects have been instrumental in supporting the renovation and establishment of several drug addiction centers across the country. Additionally, health workers throughout Afghanistan have undergone comprehensive trainings in mental health and drug disorder management, equipping them with the essential knowledge and skills to provide effective care and support to individuals in need. Homeless Afghans addicted to drug gather underneath bridges to take drugs and often rounded up, beaten and forcefully taken to treatment centers by the Taliban to avoid the visible casualties in harsh winter conditions. The rehabilitation center in the capital Kabul has some 350 staff and can cater for about 1,000 patients, yet it is occupied by about 3,500 drug addicts who have been brought there by the Taliban. A handful of rehabilitation centers are run by private charities in other cities in Afghanistan as well. Afghan is one of the leading producers of heroin and methamphetamine. Most of the drugs produced are exported to the world's black market and then other percentage of it are consumed by the people of Afghanistan. National survey of drug use among those living in Afghanistan shows that multiple substances are easily accessible and commonly used in combination. The drug use situation in Afghanistan is complex and compounded with a concern for its future given that Afghanistan is a country comprised of individuals who almost a half, that is 48%, are under the age of 15. The number of women and children reported drug use have been increased alarmingly in the last one and a half decades. However, drug treatment services expanding in urban areas of Afghanistan, but still there is need for evidence-based and culturally appropriation drug prevention and treatment program in rural areas. And to fulfill the constitutional obligation, there is an obvious need for drug institutions to refine coordination of counter-narcotics efforts. Afghanistan and its people have strained on that conflict for many decades. As security steadily declines, the government infrastructure ebbs and flows. The country faces multiple public health challenges. Narcotics, drugs of production, cultivation and availability remain the challenges for the nation's security and stability and have raised a greater attention than the related and urgent issue of problem drug use. Problem drug use is one of the most critical health challenges faced by men, women and children in Afghanistan. From 2005 to 2015, Three drug user survey have been conducted in Afghanistan. However, the differing methodology of this survey leads to results that cannot be compared across the time. In spite of the limitations, there are patterns of how drug use has increased in a country. In 2005, the first ever drug use survey conducted in Afghanistan estimated that 3.8% of all age groups were using drugs. With the most common drugs used were hashish, opium, 
heroin and pharmaceutical drugs. In 2009, a follow-up survey showed that 8% of the population aged from 15 to 64 years were using drugs. There was a 53% increase in the number of regular opium users and 140% increase in the number of heroin users since 2005. The survey also showed that 50% of parents using opium were also giving opium to their children to ease their withdrawal, as well as a means to control behavior and or hunger. In 2015, the Afghanistan National Drug Survey found that 11% of Afghanistan population tested positive, more than double of the global drug use rate of 5.2%. The most common drug used in Afghanistan are opioid, 4.9%, followed by cannabis, 2.2%, and prescription drugs, almost 1%. Among those are using drugs, 40% reported using two or more than two drugs simultaneously in the past 12 months. However, Afghanistan is facing significant drug use problem among its youths, with at least one person in every three households reporting drug use. The driver of rising drug production and drug use may include the rage of four decades of war, easy access to cheap drugs, limited access to drug use disorders treatment, prevalent poverty, several gender inequality, ever-increasing civil insecurity, movement of refugees, international displacement, urban crowding, corruption, an absence of timely or predictable justice, and overall lack of stable governance or security have created conditions. Response to those drivers have been a fragmented and in a need of refined coordination. Afghanistan's population live in rural areas, while 23.7% are living in urban areas, and 4.8% are estimated to be nomadic. Of the Afghanistan population, 49% are female. The overall illiteracy rate in Afghanistan is 31.74%, and females are less literate than males, which is 17.61% versus 45.42% due to the several cultural obstacles against women. The 2005 Drug Use Survey estimated that 120 women were using drugs and the 2015 survey showed that 850,000 of Afghan women were using drugs, which shows a, a tremendous increase of 608% of reported drug use among women in 10 years. The most the three common drugs used by women are opiates, that is 6.7%, seductives 1.5%, and cannabis 1.5% as well. Another significant finding is that among women who use opium, 78% have given opium to their children and or another family member. Women who are users of drugs are more likely to be widowed or divorced, have even less education and more than twice as likely to not have a job compared to women who do not use drugs. Injecting drugs is the most common way women report and implies the drug use is for medical purpose. More than half, that is 52.2% of women reported that they are exposed to drug for the first time by a close family member, especially a husband, and almost half of women who reported using drugs are unemployed. Of those who were employed, they worked as carpet waivers. Being a born female in Afghanistan can be added life hardship given the tremendous gender inequality exists. Even their own family members introduce them to drugs. Women play an important role in all dimensions of agricultural production, including an important role in opium production. Even when women's opium or other domestic productions such as carpet waving forms the main income of the household, they rarely control the marketing of these products, which is most often managed by female relatives. Women in Afghanistan face a constitutional equality, but legal inequality creates a discrepancy exists between civil law, customary law, and Islamic law, as well as the informal justice system, which tends to grant women even less rights. Years of conflict and violence have further eroded the protection of women's rights, and a culture of impunity reigns as far as violence is consigned, including violence against women inside and outside of their household. The present deteriorating security situation in many parts of the country constitutes the most serious obstacle to promoting rule of law, reducing the harm of drug use, improving aspects of human rights, and introduction of legal reform, which would benefit women more than any other group in the society. A decade back when using drugs were not visible in society, but the situation has changed now 
and it is more frequent to see women using drugs in hot spots why many people use drugs under the bridges in Afghanistan. Afghanistan has one of the youngest and fastest growing population in the world, almost half, that is, 48% of the population is under the age of 15, while adults 65 years or older represent only 3.7% of the nation's population. Having such a young population is both an opportunity and threat if youth are provided with education and skills, yet it poses a threat as an insurgent group can easily use uneducated youths for their purposes. Every year, 400,000 youths enter the job market in Afghanistan, but an opportunity for an economically rewarding job are limited, and even more limited for females. The 2005 drug use survey estimated that 60,000 children were using drugs, while in 2015, the figure jumped to 110,000. Why showed as 83% increase in child drug use? Afghan children are facing challenges of second and third hand smoking of opiates. A study conducted by INL from 2008 to 2011, where they tested 30 homes, including 20 heroin, opium smoking homes, and 10 controlled homes. The results show that children as young as nine months old had datable amounts of morphine in their hair samples. Metaphetamine have been seen in addition to other drugs being used in Afghanistan. The president of Afghanistan told the Turkish news channel in his interview in July 16th of 2019 that the relation of Taliban with the criminal economy is a global issue, a regional issue, and now it is going to pass heroin to production of met and crystal. The opium poppy cultivation has not decreased, but the synthetic drug production is soaring. Does the country is becoming under a double burden of opium and metaphetamines. Nowadays, no one can deny the existence of drug use in Afghanistan, and an alarming increase in prevalence of drug use is happening among women and children in Afghanistan in the last one and a half decades. The prevalence of drug use among women increased at 608%, while drug use in children increased by 83%. The government have made responsible for the counter-narcotics as described in this very video. Drug use in Afghanistan is skyrocketing, which poses risk for country and future generations. And there is a crucial need for evidence-based drug treatment and cultural appropriation drug prevention programs. Afghanistan is making stride in training the workforce of treatment providers and education and treatment coverage has been expanded in urban areas. But there is still need for drug treatment and prevention services in rural areas where most of the populations reside. Afghanistan has been a country that values education and education is needed for all citizens, both girls and boys. Does investing in universal education can help create promise in the country. There is need for economic stability to develop socially acceptable skills and unskill the unemployment opportunities for both women and men. Another way forward is to integrate skill enforcement training and vocational training with provision of microcredit supported by market survey and training in account keeping would help. As mentioned, the Ministry of Counter-Narcotics, which was the leading agency for the issue of drug, have been dissolved in other ministries and the counter-narcotics law have been reversed four times since 2003 to 2018 without proper enforcement. Now there is need for a strong institution to coordinate the crossing cutting issue of counter-narcotics and to fulfill the constitutional obligations. There is need that the President's office should take the lead to effectively coordinate and monitor the counter-narcotic activities and bring cohesion to the government's efforts and international aids. Special attention needs to be paid to the production of metaphetamine type stimulant and every effort should be made to prevent this emerging issue as early as possible. To address the drug cultivation problem used in Afghanistan, gender equality and the economy must advance. As the counter-narcotic effort is a multi-sectoral issue, there is a crucial need for both coordination among different governmental and non-governmental counterparts and most importantly, there is need to address underlying economic and security issues to help address the drug problem. By enhancing the economic power of youth and women, Afghanistan has an opportunity to move forward in the fight against drug use in the country. 
Thank you so much for watching this very video titled The Drug Addiction Capital of the World in Afghanistan. Remember to share this very video and also like and subscribe to our channel before you leave. This is still Frank Specs.